A seismic shadow zone is an area that does not receive direct body waves. The P-wave shadow extends from angular distances of about 103 to 140 degrees from an earthquake due to refraction at the core mantle boundary. The S-wave shadow, which results from S-waves being stopped entirely by the liquid core, extends from 103 degrees. So what does a seismograph record in the shadow zone? First, we look at just the direct and surface wave arrivals to two seismic stations, one outside the shadow zone and one inside the shadow zone. An earthquake sends P and S body waves through the Earth. The direct P and S waves arrive at the station outside the shadow zone. Only highly sensitive seismometers can detect these. The houses merely depict direction of motion. In the shadow zone, you'll notice there are no direct P or S arrivals, but the slower surface waves show up at all stations. An actual seismogram at 92 degrees shows the arrival of the direct P and S waves as well as the surface waves. However, if we look at an actual seismogram from 106 degrees, we see more complexity than just the surface waves we expected. So what's going on inside Earth to explain the arrival of seismic energy recorded by seismometers? Because we're familiar with the wave properties of light, let's use that experience to help us understand seismic wave behavior. Objects blocking direct sunlight cause light shadows on the ground. However, our experience tells us that these shadows are not absence of light. If the tree in the house blocked all light, the shadow would appear black, and if we entered the shadow, we would see nothing. But most shadows aren't black. That's because light reflects off nearby objects, and the redirected and reduced light energy strikes and brightens the area in shadow. Light can also bend. For example, refracting at the water surface, illuminating objects below the surface, or appearing to make half-submerged objects bend. Like these shadows on Earth's surface, the seismic shadow zone is not an absence of seismic energy. Here we see P waves encountering boundaries and being redirected into the seismic shadow zone. For example, some energy is reflected off the surface and continues its curving path through the mantle. Other energy skirts along the core mantle boundary and is diffracted back to the surface. Still other waves refract at the outer core mantle boundary and reflect off the outer core inner core boundary on their way to the station. When we compare this to the actual seismogram, we see that the arrivals are due to these reflections and refractions, therefore revealing that seismic energy does arrive in the shadow zone, but through an indirect path. Let's take a broader view to arrivals at all distances from the epicenter. Body waves reflect, refract, and diffract at boundaries throughout the Earth, creating a complexity of arrivals at all distances. This complexity permits us to learn incredible things about the dimensions and properties of the deep Earth.